Today's video, we've got Dignity versus Dez. This is in the RHG $20,000 live event. And Dignity talked about it in the uh, couple videos ago when I broke down his game against Lambo, who Lambo is one of the better players um, in the game every single year. And especially the last couple years, been pretty good, especially in the offseason. Uh, but in general, uh, Dignity is just kind of his first big, I would say big tournament atmosphere, live event, all that. And he looked really, really good against Lambo. He actually blew Lambo out pretty much. And so uh, Dignity gonna gonna have to go up against Dez here in the tournament. Uh, Dez, in my opinion, playing pretty much the best Madden uh, that he's played all year coming into this game. So we'll kind of see. Dignity's gonna be in Colts on offense, and then I'm assuming Chiefs on defense, and then Dez is gonna be on Jets on offense. And uh, Chiefs, of course, on defense, best defense in the game is Chiefs. We got full ebooks on both those offenses and defenses in the description on the Patreon page. Dez is going to start out with an RPO and uh, get a nice juke inside, uh, and and we'll see kind of how this all shapes up. Looks like Dignity is going to be running the double safety blitz defense. That uh, is really kind of the defense that seems like Dez put on the map this year. Uh, little little uh, RPO. Kind of the RPO tour here to start out. RPO bubble right, RPO screen left, left. And now we get the ball to midfield. We really haven't had to think. We really haven't had to do anything. Going to go to inside zone here on a tight offset, I would assume. Yeah, it goes to this tight offset inside zone. This tight offset inside zone is pretty good, uh, especially against Dollar. A lot, of, uh, a lot of good opportunities to run the ball there. Going to go to Durham here on the right side. And you're going to see here Dignity sending some pressure. Now, Dignity is going to, for lack of a better word, kind of do some super adjusting. So if you look here to the left side, you know, there's a lot open, a lot open. We got that, we got that. Uh, kind of super adjusts to things, mans people up, stuff like that. You'll see a lot of that from Dignity. Uh, and so anyways, able to hit pits, get out in the open field, and really pretty crisp, clean drive from Dez uh, to start this game out. What is kind of interesting is I do think – that eh, we'll see what the next play looks like. It was a deep corner. It throws a pick. That's a terrible decision. I just don't know what you see here. I don't know why you even call this play. Sometimes when I watch Dez play offense, I feel like he just calls stuff, and and I I don't I just it's sometimes hard to track Dez's logic. I just don't know why you call this play, and this play is terrible. Like just stock deep corner, literally stock. And the post, I mean, I guess the post can beat man. It just, I mean, he threw it super early. How do you, I don't know. Maybe he, he, he might know something I don't, but obviously pick here. And that's terrible. <laughs> and remember I said Dignity is going to super adjust. So what you see here again, we get a man up, we get a man up, we get a cloud for the tight end. And then on this left side, it looks like that's a man up there on the left. But Dignity is going to do a lot of that. A lot of cross manning from him is kind of the way he likes to play defense. And uh, let's see what Dez does getting set up here. So Dez in the same, basically the same defense, uh, but obviously going to be having some different shells and stuff. Dignity is going to start out with a little run up the middle, second and five situation. And uh, Dignity's in Colts. Now, Dez loves DB Fire. He's loved DB Fire for the last couple of years. He's going to go to DB Fire, too, here. Now, we get a hard flat here, and I talked about this in another video. What we're trying to do is take away the layup throws. We cannot give this quick flat up. He leaves a cloud over here to the right, but he hard flats left. Not sure why. It appears like he drops a hard flat here. So we've taken away pretty much the right side with our flooding of zones which means the user has to be over here to the left side. So you see, really good user, gets the sack, and it's going to put him in a third down and 13 situation. So now Dez typically will change the coverage behind that. Probably wouldn't want to run that same exact coverage. We'll see what he does uh, with Dignity going to bunch strong now. We'll kind of see there should be pressure here. Actually, he's only going to send four. Okay, really interesting. So third and 13 situation, he ends up playing a little bit more coverage, drop back. We get a, a cloud flat here, third, third, third. I don't know why we have two people in the same zone. This must be a cross man. Cross man's the tight. No, nope. ah, yep, that's two yellow zones. This must be a purple. I don't know. So basically what we get is essentially a drop back cover three shell with a send four, and then the user 
it is basically the show behind it. Not bad at all. Potentially could have got a KO there. Dignity gets a fav very favorable animation right there. And again, notice, I've talked about this a little bit, but I want to really emphasize this. When you watch Dez play, Dez to me is a, a top five player for the last three Maddens. Really good on defense. What wins him the most games is his defense. So when you watch Dez, you really want to try to learn what is he doing on defense? Why is he doing it? What is he trying to accomplish? What we've seen in the last couple of plays here is he's not super adjusting. He's playing fairly basic defensive shells, and he's forcing you to make difficult throws under pressure, forcing you to throw crossers, forcing you to throw corners, as opposed to being able to throw the ball to the flats. So he's taking away your first read, and then he's putting pressure behind it. So again here, look at these adjustments. This is exactly what he did uh, the other a second ago. Here we've got DB Fire 2. We've got a hook curl. We've got uh, a flat, a third, and then we have cover 2. Cover 2 with a cloud. So let's see if he keeps these adjustments. He probably will. <laughs> Excuse me. And he basically does. Except now, he puts this guy in a hard flat. Now, I don't love this adjustment. I would rather see a third or even a deep half here and put this guy in a hard flat. I feel like that's a better adjustment because if you if you – when you put the deep half here from the from this player, if he runs verts, you've got a really good chance of getting hurt there. But another underrated thing that I haven't said, uh, talked about is if you put a deep half, when you have a safety on a deep half, if he's going, if he's on the wide side of the field, he will actually play that vertical streak a lot better than if he was on the solo side. So just a little fun fact there. Here we get a close. We're closing that half. This is fairly standard, but again. We're really trying to emphasize we're taking away the layup throws and we're going to force you to throw the C route. We're going to force you to throw the corner route. We're going to force you to throw, you know, the, the, the crosser or post. So we'll see kind of what Dignity does. And again, we're going to send some pressure from it. Here he audibles to basically spinner. You see we get a five-man pressure. Pretty nice. Hard flat, no easy throw. So this is dead. All right, so the user's taking this, but he's going to pass the coverage to this flat. And then he should be bailing here. It looks like he got cut up a little bit down there. And Dignity's going to get a big-time completion. But had Dez's user not gotten caught up down in the bottom of the defense, probably would have actually had really good defense for what Dignity decided to do. Now, this is the first time we're going to see Dez throw some zone drops on. He puts his hook curls on 10 yards, probably to help defend that post route. Uh, again, pretty much right here. Notice this was what I was talking about, but we get a third, we get a third, we get a hook curl right here, which is kind of, you don't see this a lot for this tight end wheel, really nice, and then we get a, a hard flat, so the user, all he has to do is kind of midpoint between the crosser and the running back, and again, he's sending pressure while he's doing this, so throw right into a KO, and we get a KO, very nice defense from Dez, we'll see if he adjusts this at all, but again, He's actually using those yellow zones, and he's still fundamentally trying to force you to throw into coverage. Here we get a backed off slot corner on the right. So what does that mean? It means it's very unlikely that he's going to blitz this guy. It means it's very likely that he's going to blitz this guy, and he possibly could send the pressure here. So chances are we'll get a third, a third, a hook curl, a third, and then this guy is either going to be on a cloud or a hard flat. Could potentially get some cross manning, but that's generally what you would see. And here we see it again. So we actually a little bit different. So this is a hook curl. This guy's going to go into a cloud or hard flat. So this allows Dez to take everything over here to the left side. Okay, that's his main responsibility. So you see here, send pressure. He actually goes to the RPO here and is going to give it to the back and get some easy yardage. But again, it's just important to understand the coverage shells that they are using behind it. And you'll notice the more film you watch, you will notice a significant difference between what the top three to five Madden players in the world do to what the middle, you know, 25 to 50 ranked Madden players do defensively. Here, Des does this a lot, and I'm really not sure why. This is one of his favorite things to do in the key situations is to go to this big nickel. I think he just is calling this because of the shed potential here. And it's basically two cloud flats. We're going to have third, 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 and then we got two yellows. So it's kind of an interesting little way to get to a cover three. And we're trying to rely on our KOs. 
Now that forces a fourth down. Should be no huddle from Dignity. Surprised he didn't do that. Oh, he puts his flats on 20. Okay. Really interesting in light of it's a third and five situation. I, I just think that's kind of an interesting interesting coverage, interesting defense. Fourth and inches. We're going to show blitz out of B-Nog. Probably just trying to shoot the run, and that's a terrible play call, in my opinion. You don't call that on four. I just don't. You can't be calling the run play against big nickel over G. We called inside zone against big nickel over G on fourth and inches. I feel like that's a miss. Big nickel over G is very weak from a pressure perspective. He would have had all day to throw the ball. Kind of interesting. Kind of an interesting decision there uh, from Digny. I just don't agree with it. I'm sure he had a reason to do that. Anywho, RPO, handoff. Notice that Dez makes – Dez is going to do a lot of things to make his off make offense easier for himself. He's going to run a lot of RPOs. He's going to audible around, right? And he's going to quick hike. Things like that are some of the interesting things because Dez, I think, would self-admit he's not one of the best offensive players in the world. I think he's probably maybe top 10, but he's not a top level. You know, he's not John Beast on offense. He's not Henry on offense. He's not Wesley on offense. He's He's kind of middle of the road offensively. Is 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 really his biggest strength is I think he's 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 really right there with with I think Noah and Henry for being the best defensive players in the world every Madden for the last three Maddens at least and maybe more. Noah has been probably one of the best, if not the best, defensive player in Madden for since Madden twenty. You know, the only person that may be a little better than Noah defensively is Henry, and that's probably one A one B type thing so they will always be in games for their defense but I want you to watch how how Dez specifically kind of plays offense a lot of RPOs a lot of making the game easy for yourself a lot of audibly and around quick snapping uh, kind of interesting to to kind of think about but anyways second and three and we're going to go back to this cover three bomb and I think he's just doing this because he's pretty convinced that this was a third so we're looking – so right here at this point, what we're looking at is this defender. If this defender squats on the tight end, then we can throw the crosser. If this defender cuts the crosser, then your tight end will be open in the corner. So look at the tight end. At this point, tight end is open, but he did get him to pull enough that he's going to try to throw that crosser. Gets a nice animation, able to get the catch and get down for an easy gain. First and 10, red zone. Should be a run play here. We might throw wide curl. He'll probably run the ball. Nope, it's going to go to five wide. So you don't see people run this five wide stuff. Why run this? Not sure. But uh, gets a little drag. Check down. Jurtle right into an almost hit stick, but ends up being a touchdown for him. And there you go. He gets seven. He gets a stop. He gets stopped. He gets a stop. He gets seven. And now, now we're kind of back to square one. Now, Dignity is going to get the ball at halftime. So if you're Dignity, you might want to try to make this the last drive of half. Kind of see, again, when he, when he drops this guy back, what's that typically mean? It means he's not going to blitz. So the blitz, if there's pressures coming from these two, these two guys. All right? And this is like the old school free safety zone blitz with the backed off. Uh, backed off slot. He's also choosing to back these guys off. So, so again, you see, this is really ah, it's just so important. I can't stress this enough. Look at the coverage, guys. Look at the coverage. We're not giving up layups. We're not giving up layups. This hook curl, no layup. You can't just throw a running back Texas into that window, right? Now, what does this mean based off of this look right here? What's open? Well, the corner is going to be open here to the right side. The C route is going to be open here to the left side, but the user is going to be right here. And what's the user going to be trying to take away? User is going to be trying to take away really this kind of back end, this little quick throw streak. If the if this guy goes on a streak, that's kind of what the user is working to take away. So anyways, as you can see right here, super interesting coverage. And again, we're not giving up layups. So look here to the right side with me as he snaps this ball. Boom. We get the snap. Okay, so we know blocked running back, and we basically have essentially the same combo that Dez just ran on him. So this is the corner. This is the streak, which this third should play the streak. And then we just have the drag, which is going to run into this hook curl, which is why that's there. And then we've got the cross. So where's Dez going? He's taking the cross. 
pretty much. And the tight end corner is open, as you see. But due to pressure, he has to throw it early. And so our deep zone KO has a really good chance to knock it out. Doesn't end up getting there, but he did certainly have. And, and just please appreciate the tightness of the windows. That is so important, guys. The, the, the tight windows that he's having to throw in under pressure could very easily result in interceptions. Here's another one of my favorite coverages against trips. Um, I, these are clouds, and then we cross, man, this guy right here. So this streak is going to be dead. This also kind of makes the crosser dead to a degree. The beauty of this cloud flat and this half is it's going to make this corner route a lot more difficult. So if you think about this play, what's the real stuff that's going to be open? Pretty much this underneath space here, or best case scenario would be to get over the cloud on the sidelines, either with a crosser or a C route. So let's see here again. Now we got a flat to the back. Looks like a streak, streak. Yep, basically, so this is verticals. So the tight end corner, and then we have this. So you should hit the running back, maybe hit that tight end corner right there, but that's a tight window, and he's going to end up rolling out. Now we're in this little cat and mouse game. Dez is going to be able to kind of come over here and use her and send this guy, and going to have to basically kill the play. So really, really, really interesting adjustments. Now he's kind of kind of tweaking it around, and it looks like he's going to go to Big Nickel. I don't know why, <laughs> but he's going to go to Big Nickel. He's going to use her the DN. <laughs> and I'm just not sure why he does that, but he loves to do this. This is like his, his, his adjustment. for. He'll just randomly go to this Big Nickel coverage. It's just kind of an – I just – you just don't see people do this much. And I think it's – and he's done this for a long, long time. He's he's gone to that big nickel over G. He's he, this exact coverage. It's basically big nickel over G cover three. He's going to back off the outside corners, put them in clouds, and then basically try to roll this into a cover three. Yeah, with a couple yellows, and essentially he's just saying take your flat route. So, and again, why do this in third and twelve? Not sure because you got two yellows here. I don't love that. I'd like to see maybe a curl flat. I'm not sure why he did that. But in general here, the user does not need to user this. We have this cloud. You've got to get here with your user. It's actually a really bad user. If it's a better user, it's probably, you know, I mean, he'd have to throw this flat, which is, is maybe five yards, whereas his ability to throw this on the run and then cut up is now going to be, you know, almost 12 yards with the journal. So... You know, just right there, kind of not greatest user. Now we're in fourth and one out of a no huddle. Your zone drops aren't great. But he does love this right here, and this is where the stop came last time. We put both of these guys in the A-gaps, and then we're kind of adjusting from there off that. We got these guys backed off on the outside. Fourth and one. He's going to send one, two, three, four, five. And then uh, he actually – so this is interesting. So these are thirds right here right and then this is a middle third he because he had his zone drop set he protected the sticks what protect the sticks did is it took these cloud flats and it made them protect the first down marker which happens to be one yard so every throw is going to be hard and his lurk is really just right in this little window right here and he's just a step too late and dignity is going to be able to get the first down so a lot going on in those couple plays but a lot hopefully to be learned. So, let's see here. Should be a blitz here, but I don't know if he will. Nope. He actually played, I think, standard Mabel coverage right there. Second and 12, blew up the run. Second and 12 again, might be the same call. Yep, so this is just standard Mabel. Now, he puts these at 20 yards so that they stop right here. Right, so they stop right here. So, boom. Pretty good defense, good read. User is kind of in no man's land. And that's going to bring up a first down and goal. Wing slot. Let's see how he defends this. Pinch D-line, 6-1, probably crash in middle. Probably man this guy up here. Drop the safeties down. Not sure what that is. He's going to press these guys up. He's got the motion for the lead block. 
Ends up going to the right side. That run's just not very good out of there. It's kind of more of just a trying to take Dez's timeouts. In this situation, Dignity's probably trying not to score here. He's probably to take some clock, trying to take some clock with the situation to make sure that Dez uh, does not get the ball with a ton of time. He's going to probably get the ball back, but we want to try to limit the time that he has. That's why we're running some of this random stuff. And here he is going to end up scoring, as you see his facial expression. And I guess he actually ended up getting a penalty there, which is kind of interesting. Illegal man downfield, pretty fluky penalty. Doesn't happen all the time. Kind of random. But ultimately, um, you know, he, he would have given Dez the ball back with a minute and a half. So that's pretty much guaranteed field goal, if not a touchdown in this game. So here we go, double Mabel from Dez. It's really interesting to me, the more I watch – these comp games, how much, how much of this, when you play coverage, how much coverage is this defense right here? This is the main coverage defense. This double Mabel, drop eight coverage with a vert hook, <coughs> with a vert hook in the middle. And really good. Has to check it down. Jukes inside, and he gets seven again. So same kind of choice from Dignity there. He didn't try to really clock him. Uh, he just took his timeouts. So now Dez is in a position where he can go down and get seven. And we'll see how Dignity wants to play defensively. So get a streak, get a run. Second and seven, no huddle. He's got the double safety still. Let's see what Dez does here. This is a deep corner. This is stock deep corner again. Why wouldn't you run this? <laughs> it's just bad. I, I just... I mean, it's not bad, but it's not it's not optimal play calls. He's and and you're not able, you're not really like this is kind of like bad offense. Like it really is. Like right there, like called deep corner. I think he streaked the right guy instead of use the post that threw a pick on. And I mean, he's open, but why call that? Why call that short side? I, I don't know. That's a good play wide side. So anyway, we'll go fourth and three. 17 seconds. Really hasn't done a good job of getting out of bounds. I'm just not sure why, like the reasoning behind some of the play calls on this specific drive offensively. Um, verticals get the tight end. That's a big dot right there. Now why? It's kind of interesting. Also, why is Dignity like look, look at watch Dignity's user. Like where can Dez throw at this point? If he throws right here, it's probably the end of half. And this is a, probably a half right here. You have a KO that this is running into. The only throw is right here. That's the only throw he can make. And he does, I guess, to, to, get, to Dignity's credit, he's does, he does go to it. He's just a little late. And Dez is able to uh, make the throw. So now Dez has a field goal. If he doesn't get sacked, Dignity kind of mentally, I think he knows, to do just a little step behind better user that's probably bagged up gonna go to bunch strong here let's see what he calls motion out the running back why wouldn't you when when you can't afford to get sacked why not motion out a flat route <laughs> i just don't get it so okay so where can the pressure come from here it can come from here but most likely it's going to come from here and the user is going to go flat third 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 flat like this throw ends the half the only throw you can make is really to the left side so i think it's interesting that he motioned out a flat route but maybe just doing that for disguise elements i don't know so you see exactly what i said pressure one two three okay now to the right side here we get flat or man up this side is really dead can't throw that which, as you see, he can't throw that, right? Where can he throw the ball? So he has to throw it away. Now, at least he did throw it away. I guess that's the ultimate, like, maybe that's why he put the flat right out there, so that he could throw the ball away and make sure that it went out of bounds. A lot of debate there, but I just think that's an interesting route combo in the situation. So now we get a drop eight coverage from Digden. He actually really liked that drop eight coverage from him right there. He's going to take this. You can't throw this route. This route is not relevant. So the only route you can throw is R1. 
and then you got to get out of bounds. And he almost didn't get out of bounds. So now he's going to go ahead and think it's three, going to half. I just feel like Dez kind of offensively has not been the sharpest this game. Haven't seen really great offense from him yet. And Dez will go through these little spells where sometimes his offense is unbelievably good, and then other times it's like this where it's a little just kind of like disjointed. Okay, really important. Let's take a look at the show. So Dignity is going to audible. Let's see what the audibles. Does he have a tight here? Okay, so this is a, a really underrated formation in Colts. This is tight Y off weak. It's very similar to tight slots. The only difference is this guy is on the line of scrimmage instead of off the line of scrimmage, and it is a big difference. Let's take a look at Dez's defense for this. Third, third, half cloud with a man up on the tight end, and that man up is actually the user. That's kind of an interesting decision. Um, I think the cloud flat's a good choice because running back table, that will come down and just rally and tackle that. It will also delay the corner route to the left. The hook curl is kind of an interesting one. That's probably for the running back streak. And then essentially what Des is probably thinking is if the tight end or he's basically kind of in this section from a defensive perspective. So, again, what are we trying to do? Well, we're taking away layups on the left-hand side, and then our user is going to make sure – that this side is difficult, okay? So let's see here. And it's going to send five. We're sending pressure behind this as well. So you see, send five. Now, he sees this. Dez is, is, is beelining to this tight end. Look at the user. Look at the user. See how, he's, see how he's taking his job? He's doing his job. Now, there's a lot of stuff over here that he could worry about. But, again, his job is his job. He has to go take that away. So this forces dignity. And you see, look at that. That's incredible. This is a great example of doing your job well. Okay, so Dignity's first read is this flat. He sees this guy come. It's actually a good read, but he throws it significantly late. So at this point right here, the ball should be out. I'm not sure why it's not. He probably looked here first, okay, and he saw this cloud. So then... He goes, okay, not, that's not open. Now I'm going to look over here to my right flat, and I see, okay, it's open. So at this point, he's throwing the ball. Dez has been able, because Dez did not hesitate with his user, because he sprinted at a good angle to try to lurk this, he's able to get the user lurk and completely change the game on the defensive side of the ball. Super impressive user right there. And again, it was, a, was it a bad read from Dignity? It actually wasn't that bad of a read. It was just a late read. He was literally half a second late, and it cost him seven points. Really, really, really high-level play right there from Dez, and uh, a lot that can be learned from that. Do your job as a user. All right, first and ten. Send five out of DB fire. So here Dez kind of mixes in a little cross man D. So we got running back man up, man up, third, third, third. And here you start to see some things. So – Dignity is late. This is open. He's not reading it. He's not throwing it. It's open. It's open. It's open. It's open. Now we throw it late. Now maybe he knew that he would be able to potentially complete that up the sideline late. I think it's just a late read. And you're seeing this, this, this delayed ability in reads kind of come back to get him here. Love this. So what is this going to do? Why are we running man here? Well, we're running man here because if Dignity goes back to that route, that's going to be bagged. And then on the left side, we're running a cover two. Why, why run a cover two on the left side? Well, if they run double post or if they run verticals, the deep half will handle the crosser enough. And then we have a backed off cloud flat, which that backed off cloud flat will take away a C route. It'll rally and tackle a running back flat route. It'll delay a streak enough for the half to get back. That's kind of the logic uh, behind that right there and this is out of spinner and here we are and you see see how that takes that away now we get a drag here which we had a yellow or this yellow i don't know why that yellow is there he might have adjusted this he might have adjusted and changed the coverage actually now that i look at it i think he did i think he got out of the man look on the left and made it a cover two on both sides so now we're going a bunch strong, nasty. And again, just notice like hard flat, hard flat. Why are we doing the hard flats? 
you're forcing the opponent to have to throw back in there, okay? You're forcing the opponent to have to throw in that window. Those are the hardest windows to hit in this game, okay? Because of the KOs and because of just the pressure in general. So we get a cross man on the linebacker for the couple different things. It ends up not really helping. I don't know what that – maybe that was a yellow. Maybe just yellowed him. Anyway, there's your crosser. Okay, tough throw, but makes the throw, right? Makes the throw. So tough throw, but he's able to make it. I don't know what my mouse is doing, being crazy here. So going back to spinner. He goes to spinner most of the time. That's actually really important. Um, a lot of people don't realize that spinner, and we get a sack fumble. Okay, so this is where the game really starts to shift. And again, why, why that adjustment there to the right? If he runs flat, this is taken away. Now, Dez obviously is aware that if this guy's on a double post, if he doesn't go user it, it's a touchdown, right? So you see here, he's kind of helping here. And then basically you just get the step up, step up, step up. This is the worst part. And it's kind of honestly on dignity a little bit. You're not going to beat the scramble into a spy. So the play's kind of dead. Should have thrown it away. Should have taken a sack. Ends up trying to get out of there a little bit with his quarterback, trying to basically climb the pocket and then maybe roll out, and he gets sack fumbled. And so now Dez is in complete control. In a game where Dez really hasn't done much offense, uh, he is in complete control. So now you see heavy pressure. I got to pop. We should be popping that triangle route quick, right, boom, right there. It's open. We're late. We're going to get out of here, probably roll out, throw it away. And actually scramble. Actually turn a – that's crazy. That was a sack that he turned into a 13-yard gain. That's that's Bo Jackson just being Bo right there. Going to empty. This five wide is really interesting to watch him run some five wide here. And I'm just trying to kind of learn. Going for a bomb here as a cover three beater. Gets screamed at here so we don't have time. So at this point, when, once you see this, the bomb's pretty much dead. So you got to check to – this drag, this crosser, or throw it away. Now, this should be a throw away. Yep. Throws it away, second and 10. Go to trips, RPO screen. RPO screen, yep. Okay, so it's so important to go over this. And he actually got a bad animation there. Notice how Dez is up two possessions. He's making the game easier for himself. He's not putting him in, I'm not saying run RPOs every play. I'm saying Dez is calling plays that he doesn't have to think. Okay, not everybody should play like that. Not everybody's supposed to play like that. He ended up throwing a pick on his first drive because of that, I think. But in general, make having plays like an R RPO or having plays like a good run play, it kind of helps in a game like this where Dez really hasn't had to do a lot offensively, and he's winning twenty to seven. And I would say he's played bad offense. He just, I just feel like he's he's not played his best offensive game. And he's still winning by two possessions, right? Now Dignity is in a, uh, a keep alive or stay alive position here. If he doesn't score here, he's probably in a lot of trouble. You're seeing this man defense from Dez uh, really give him trouble. And it's a lot of like – it's just because – it's because of the pressure. So we'll see uh, kind of what he does here. This should be double Mabel. Nope, we're going to send it. Okay, so we're sending one, two, three, four. So we've been running a lot of man. Now we're going to go right back, and we're going to run some zone. we got a little yellow, a little flat, a little flat, quarter, quarter. Good, good, good adjustments. And I think Diddy they actually called a man beater. There he tries to slide. That was terrible. It sucks. It, it sucks for Digny. Obviously, he probably didn't mean to do that. But, you know, ultimately, it's a mistake. It's a mistake. RPO screen. Why, why call the RPO screen? Don't have to think. Doesn't get a bad animation this time. And now we're in scoring range. Dez understands. If he can get this through a, to a three-possession game, which basically to do that, he just needs to score. Honestly, I think if even if he scores a field goal, he's okay. But he just needs to score on this drive. Um, and the game's over. Pretty much. Little jailbreak screen, little arp, little scramble out immediately. Jailbreak screen. Why wouldn't you do that? 
And to me, like, I didn't love that play. I feel like that was kind of like being a little cute. Just stick with your RPOs, man. He can't stop your RPOs. And we're going to block seven. We're going to block seven. Not sure why. Throw the drag. And Dez is also kind of conscious of this clock. Trying to get the clock down a little bit, too. Going to audible to five wide again. Then going to dagger. He loves to go to dagger with that deep in route. He's got three streaks. Now he's got a flat. Look to the flat left. Not there. Okay, going to go ahead and test it, actually. Actually, wow. That was there. <laughs> that was there. <laughs> Oh, goes for two here. Now, this is just kind of mean. But when your opponent's drowning, you pour water on them. And dignity kind of sucks. But Dez popped him. And I've talked to Dignity before a couple years ago. I played him. It's really fun to play him. And he's a good player. And here, I mean, there's just a couple. I mean, you watch this game back. This really comes down to... You know, two fumbles, maybe three fumbles. It was at least two. Maybe it was two fumbles and a lurk, a pick six, and then a fourth down run call. Here, Dez getting a little greedy and just lets Dignity kind of right back in the game. <laughs> so right here, that's actually really good poise from Dignity. He's going to go spinner, and he's going to send everybody. Why Why do this? I think Dez is thinking if he gets a sack, it really puts it on him here. So we're trying to. You know, just lurk the main stuff, and this crosser just wins. And Dignity's able to get out, score seven. And we get onside kick. Des gets the onside kick. And now we're going to go back. And now we'll, now it's time to get the clock. All right, we're to the fourth quarter, five minutes left. Des really at this point, because he was able to get that two-point conversion here, all he needs is a field goal. He gets field goal, he wins. He's in field goal range. So at this point, he should take as much time as possible. It's interesting, that's the fourth time, I believe, that he's called that RPO alert screen. And every single time he has called that play, it has basically looked like it's going to be a touchdown. Dignity has not really adjusted to that. And every time he's gone to trips, I think with maybe one exception, he's called the RPO alert screen. Probably we'll see it again here. Third and six. Again, Look, notice the clock management. He's taking the time. Going to do a little motion in. And I hate that play. I just don't like this play. I mean, this is just this is just keeping dignity in the game. Look at the tight end. Tight end's a touchdown. And I mean, I guess I don't know what he was thinking is throwing at his user. Like a fundamental rule of Madden generally is don't throw at the user. He throws right at him. That wasn't even like when Des picked picked him off. When Des picked him off, Des was on the other side of the field. You know, and Disney D Dignity probably just didn't think he was going to get there. I just feel like that was such a bad decision. And I think it's just Dez taking his foot off the gas a little bit, kind of situationally. And here you're going to see Dez probably snap back into it a little bit and play a little bit more disciplined. Here he third, middle third, man up for the flat. I don't love – I guess I get it. This is fine on the left side if he's going to go use the post. We'll see what he does here. Nope. Yep, we're back. So – Excuse me. The deep half here is really important because the deep half, that crosser that just scored a touchdown last drive, that deep half is going to take that away. So you get that nice deep half, get the man up, really good, double post. That's his double post defense. And then his just basically going to work the drag coming under that cloud flat. So that's fine. That's fine. We just can't give it all back in one play. There's a hard flat. That's a good adjustment by Dez, and it's actually a good throw by Dignity, too. I mean, that that hard flat should play that wheel. Didn't play it. Was not able to get it done. Here we go. Red zone situation. And understand, guys, it is so hard to score inside the 10 in this game. It really is. It's so hard to just drop back and pass inside the 10-yard line with the pressures and the, the constrained space. And so, you know, that's another big part of the defensive strategy this year. Try to make them score inside the five. 
Here's second and 13. Tight end corner. And check down to the running back. Try to juke. Didn't really work out for him. Got him a few extra yards, maybe. Third and seven, lurking on the left side, tight end corner. I like that send six. Fourth and seven. It's crazy how much that tight end corner is open. Throw a streak. Oh. That's a tough read right here. So we're lurking on the DN. And I don't know what that adjustment is there on the little right. It might be a man up. It might not. But he gets a, it looks like a zone KO. Probably a third or a cloud. Anyway, he gets the KO. He's able to kind of survive that big mistake. And now we're going to run the ball. Second and four. You see the clock. Dayton, he basically has to get a stop right here or it's over. That's a fumble. That could have very well been a fumble. <laughs> um, don't love that. But it was open. I mean, it was open. Let's see. We're going to go back to tight offset. This is the inside zone on a tight offset. Okay. Fourth down. We're going to punt. No, we're going to go for it. Okay. We're going to go back to trips tight end, the same play that we threw the pick on. And we're going to try to throw the tight end because the tight end's open. And this time we throw the tight end. And we put ourselves in a good position to win the game. Bunch. This is base. Uh, Des loves to run base from right to left. Remember I talked about if you're in an offset formation, like trips tight end offset, it doesn't matter. But if you're in gun bunch, not gun bunch offset, but gun bunch, you want to hand the ball off to the running back on the side. Uh, you want the running back to be on the side of your quarterback's throwing arm. Bo Jackson is right-handed. Have the running back on your right and run it from right to left to get a better handoff animation. Third and eight. Ball on the 32-yard line. Two possession lead for Dez. Goes back to the RPO screen, and it's been open all day. And you see Dignity, the, the, the play that he just could not stop. Just could not stop. Could not stop that play all game. And Dez is going to go ahead and deal it out and move on. I want to thank you for watching the video. If you guys want to get my full ebooks on any of this stuff, it's all available in the Patreon. Pretty much very similar stuff to what these guys are doing. We kind of break down not only what it is, but why it works, how you can make it better, all that stuff. If you want to know everything I know about Madden, it's in the Patreon for just $10. If you want to sign up for that, head down to the description and click the link down below.